Welcome to the Gemma. So what I'd like to do is show you how to expand logarithmic expressions. Now, expanding logarithmic expressions, what we're going to do is follow the rules of logarithms. And the rules of logarithms, we have product rule, quotient rule, as well as power rule. And I've kind of labeled them, or put them up here. Here's the product rule. Here's the quotient rule. Here's the power rule. And then I wrote just kind of two other, um, two other little you know, exponential uh, or rules of exponents that you know, can come in handy as far as rational powers. Uh, you can rewrite as a radical and vice versa. Negative powers you can rewrite as um, you can rewrite in the denominator. So there's multiple different ways to do this. I'm just going to do it the way that I think would be best. Um, but just to, so you know, there's you know different ways for some of these problems that you can. We'll still arrive at the exact same uh, simplified expression or expanded expression. So. Basically what we have when we're expanding is we're given one single logarithmic expression and what we want to do is expand it. And we're going to basically be using these three uh, properties of logarithms to do just that. So basically what we want to do is first kind of identify what type of uh, property that we have. So in this case I have log base 3 of 5, uh, 5x. Well 5x is multiplication. Right? You're multiplying the 5 and the x. Well, what the properties of logarithm state is if you have the logarithm of a base b of the product of two uh, terms, what we can do is rewrite that as two separate logarithms with that same base by adding, um, adding the two logarithms. So this one is just going to be log base 3 of 5 plus log base 3 of x. The next example is going to be using the quotient property. You can see that I am uh, dividing my x and y. So just like I'm dividing my m and the n, I'm now going to rewrite that as subtraction. So there, and again, it doesn't matter. I use the properties of logarithms for uh, for base 10, but you know, or for any nat or regular logarithms. But you, it works the same for natural logarithms as well as well as a logarithm for any base. So therefore, this is going to be the ln of x minus ln of y. The last major property is the power rule. And basically what the power rule of logarithm states is if you have a logarithm of base b of m raised to the n power, we can rewrite that as the product of that power times your logarithm. So we can take 4 and rewrite it in front and write log x. Now, the, uh, the rules of logarithms are not just, you know, I just did one property at a time. But now what we're going to do is start getting into log, simplifying or expanding logarithms where there's going to be multiple properties involved. Um, on this next one, it might not be apparent on what exactly is, what exactly am I going to do? Where did the radical come from, right? That's not available in there. Well, by using our rules of exponents, we understand that a radical can be rewritten as a power. So I can rewrite this as log base 2 of y to the 1 third. Now I can take that 1 third and put it in front. Okay. Um, in the next one, you can see now I have three different logarithms. Well, with each logarithm, I am multiplying. So now all I'm going to do is apply the product rule, not uh, once, but twice. I need to separate these two as multiplication and these two. Now you can do it in certain steps. Right? You can do one at a time, um, or you can just break up each one of these. So now I'm going to do log of y squared plus log of x to the negative third plus log of the square root of z. Okay. Now, the main important thing here is you can see that now I have powers in each one. Of, well, not in each one of those. I can rewrite this as raised to the 1 half. Right? Well, now you can see each of my logarithms have a power. Well, we don't like having powers, right? We want to write those powers in front. So to write it in fully expanded form, I'm going to bring the 2 down. I'm going to bring down the negative 3. And I'm going to bring down the 1 half. And usually, plus or minus, we just write as minus. Okay? Um, but there you go. That would be our fully expanded form. Um, in the next one here, you can see that I just have now I have the product rule over um, the product rule and the quotient rule. So rather than doing the product, product and then the power, now I have two properties. Now what I would recommend when doing this is to separate them using the quotient rule first and then using the product rule. So if you were to do that, it would look something like this. Log of 2x minus 
log of y squared. Okay, so by doing that, I've separated them using the quotient rule. Now I can apply the product rule here and the power rule over here. So I can do log of 2 plus log of x minus, bring the 2 down, 2 times log of y. Over here, I have the exact same case, except now, oh, I guess I had just have some more numbers in the bottom, top. Actually, you know what? Let's bring that. That's like the exact same problem. Let's put the, let's put the down below. Now again, this is going to be the exact same thing. Separate them by the quotient rule, then do the power rule. So it's going to be ln of y minus ln of x cubed z squared. Okay? Well, that's already done. So I just do ln of y minus. I'm going to um, actually separate them. ln of x cubed plus ln of z squared. Then I apply the power rule. Okay, so a lot of times we're going to be using uh, the pro uh, multiple properties in a row. Um, I think it's just helpful whenever you have a rational, uh, rational term to separate it using the quotient rule first and then apply certain properties. However, in a problem like this, we can't simply do that because our rational term is being raised to, uh, or is, you're taking the fifth root of it. So the first thing I would do is rewrite this as a power. Now again, we can't apply the quotient rule because our, our quotient is being raised to the one-fifth power. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually use the power rule to get rid of that power. Now I don't have a power over my x divided by y. Now I can separate using the quotient rule. And there's a big problem we've got to be very careful with. And I'm going to show it to you here in just a second. Now, if you look at what I just wrote, I have 1 fifth log base 5 of x minus log base 5 of y. Well, this is only saying that the, one, the exponent is only going to go to the x. It's not going to go to the y. So we have to be able to devise a symbol that would represent that this 1 fifth is really being raised to both of these, right? So we need to include parentheses or brackets. But if you don't produce the parentheses or brackets, it's not going to be um, it's going to be wrong. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Okay, uh, next example. Here I have a quotient, so I can separate it. So that's what I'll do first. I have log base 6 of 25 minus log base 6 of the square root of x plus 1. Now, this one gets a lot of students because, you know, when we're looking at this, we say, okay, well, I can rewrite the square root as x plus 1. But what do I do when there's... Um, What do I do when I, have an, when I have terms separated by addition? Nothing. This is your term. This is your expression. This is like your x or is like your y. We can't separate these with using the properties of logarithms. The properties of logarithms only work for multiplication, division, and uh, as a raising to a power. So this is like our expression. If you want to think about it, just erase it and think of it just as another variable. Okay, and just follow the same process. But now what we can look at here is um, basically all I can really need to do now is put the one half in front. So my final answer is log base six of twenty-five minus. Oh, you know what? I didn't do that. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change this one more time. I'm gonna put that to the third power. So I have log base uh, six to the twenty-five equals one half log base 6 to the x plus 1. Okay, so again, be very, very careful with keeping that there. All right, the reason why I wanted to put that 3 there is kind of, it's kind of similar to the same thing here. We have to make sure we keep those parentheses. Um, so again, the first thing, whenever I have a power, I want to bring that power in front. I'm going to bring the power in front, and I'm going to apply the uh, quotient rule. I'm kind of running out of space, so I'm going to do a couple uh, properties on the same time. So by pro applying the quotient rule, and I'm going to put that x minus 3 in parentheses because, again, just like here, it's a product all into itself. Um, and again, I want to make sure I put parentheses around this because this 3, if you were to condense these, 
I need to put the three up to both of them. So you really, really important that you keep those parentheses. That's why I wanted to add the three to this problem. Um, all right, well now I can rewrite this as, um, I can now apply the power rule. So that's gonna be ln of x to the 1 half plus ln of y squared minus ln of x minus three. And now I can bring my powers in front. And I have now finished expanding my logarithmic equations. Thanks, or expressions, thanks.